So at this point, we've, we've got this app where we're saving text data. We're activating the, the camera to take a photo, uh, that is, to scan a barcode. So then we have the data of the comic saved in the, in the uh, database. Well, what, we'll, what will also be cool is to be able to take a photo of the comic itself. So we're going to access the camera again this time for the purpose of taking a photo. That barcode used the camera, but not for the purpose of taking a photo. It used it for the purpose of checking all these little lines and decoding what those lines mean. So this is going to be a different plugin. The barcode plugin was for scanning barcodes or creating barcodes. The camera plugin is used for taking plain old photos. So we'll use that. We have several things that we need to set up as usual. We need to create in our main interface a button to take a photo. Then we need to set up our, our um, pouch object to have a, a photo field. And then saving it into the, into the database. So we'll start with adding in the HTML file. We'll We'll go back to index.html so that we can add the, the button for the capability to uh, take a photo. So let me find. That's going to be under PG Save Comic. Let's see. PG Save Comic right over here. This is at about line 168 or so. This is the field. This is the area where we created these input fields. We've got the input field for the name of the comic and all of the rest. We want to add a field here also for the. We want to add a field here also for the. Uh, for the photo. Now, I said a while ago, remember when we had the activity of the social networks? We had a JSON file uh, that referenced a photo. We didn't actually have the photo data in the JSON file. We had a link, uh, we had a reference to the photo in the JSON file. We're going to do something similar to that here, in that we're not going to save the raw photo data into pouch. We could, but that's not efficient. You know, all of that 20 megapixel data into our database, that's not going to be efficient. And pretty much all the time you have a reference to a file or some entity in your database, not the actual raw data. So we're going to do that here by having an invisible input field that will temporarily hold where is the location of that photo on the memory card? We're going to take a photo of the comic and it will be saved to the device. And then there's a location in the folder structure of the device. And that's what we're going to save to the database. A pointer, can, uh, you know, uh, an address pointing us to where the photo is in the device. Let's set up here in the HTML file at about line 168. We need a new field, and this one will be hidden. Well, after, uh, actually 164, we've got an input of text for the barcode. And we've got a button that says, let's scan a barcode. Let's make a new button right after that, a new horizontal rule, a new input of type text no placeholder but an ID in photo this is our input field that will store the location the path to our photo well I don't need to show the user this field so we have an attribute that we can add. Let's say input type of text, 
put then another attribute here, simply hidden. It doesn't need any it doesn't need any property and value. I think technically it's hidden equals hidden, even though that doesn't make sense. Or maybe hidden true. But just hidden on its own is the attribute we need. This uh, this is just a little placeholder to hold when we click a button to take a photo, the path to the photo. I If it's hidden, the user should never see it. But just in case, we can also have here disabled, meaning don't let the user try to type anything in this box. So it's hidden. We shouldn't have to worry. But it's OK to worry sometimes. So I'll also put disabled. Just in case they do see that path to that photo, don't let them type anything there and mess up the path to the photo. Because once that gets messed up, then the photo is, not a, is no longer associated with the, with the comic in the database. I think this is another one that technically it's disabled equals disabled. But just on its own, hidden attribute, disabled attribute. Below that, we'll create the button that starts the whole process to take a photo. So similar to the line above, input field of a type of a plain old button. Value is the text that will appear to the user. We'll say, take photo. Or what do the youngsters say nowadays? Snap a photo. Sure. Snap photo. Snap a pic. Dog. Yeah, that'll work. So ID equals BTN save photo. Snap some pics, dog. You know, whatever you want, whatever make whatever makes sense for your button, whatever the terminology of your app is and its style. So we've got this field that is going to uh, store the path to the photo temporarily. And we've got a button to initialize taking a photo. OK, well, in the uh, JavaScript, we need to create an object that represents that HTML node. We need to create an event listener that waits for that button click. We then need to create a function that runs after we capture that event. But wait a minute. Behind all of that, we need to make sure we've got a field in our data that we're going to store in the database. But wait a minute. Before all of that, we need the plugin that lets us take a photo. And like I said, the plugin that uses the barcode, its purpose is to scan barcodes, not to take photos. So let's say we do this part. Let's add the plain old camera plugin in config XML. Let's go over to the config XML file and add the camera plugin. It's a core plugin, so it's just there for you to select. Unlike this barcode scanner, which was a third-party plugin, we had to go find the, the, the ID for it and submit it and all of that. So let's go to config XML. Plugins. Camera. I'm going to let that do its thing behind the scenes. So confirm that in your HTML, you've got the user-facing content, the button to take a photo. Con confirm that you've added the camera plugin in config XML. Save that. Close config XML. Camera plugin, save that, close config XML.
Okay, let's set up first in index.js. Uh, let's go look at our function prep comic. Function prep comic. Function that reads inputs and prepares data in the right way. So here's where we said let's capture the value of what was in title, in number, etc., etc. Last time we did in barcode. Guess what's coming up next? Comma. In va uh, val in photo equal to in photo dot val. So at about line two twenty five, we're adding a new variable of data that we're capturing. So comma on the line before val dollar val in photo equal to pound in photo. The ID that, that we just used a moment ago for our input field. Not the button, the input field in photo. And we're saying give me the val, the value of whatever's in there. And the value eventually will be the path to the photo after we do the whole take a photo function. semicolon, end of statement. Further down inside of our prep comic, well, if here we capture the path to the photo, we actually use it later on when we bundle all of this together in our JSON syntax. So further down, after we process the or an, remember all of that, here it is, var temp comic. This is where we bundle all the data together. We had barcode last time. It was the very last uh, key and value pair. So we need a comma there to add a brand new one. We can just simply call it photo. So line 226, 227, comma quotes photo colon dollar val in photo no final semicolon or comma that's just the way it is that's the syntax of this JSON object so when we uh, work with the social networks activity a little while ago remember we had all of these fields we had the name of the network the description of the network we had a picture of the network, and it wasn't the raw data in, in the field. It was just a, a path to it. It was pick one, or pick two, or pick nine. Well, this is going to have the whole path that it'll give me to the photo somewhere, wherever on the de it is on the device, memory card, or internal, wherever. And now we've got a new field that we're starting to save to the, um, to the database. Okay, if that ultimately saves the data of the photo to the database, we need to initialize the whole feature of the app that starts the camera to take a photo. Since we've added the camera plugin, we have the capability, our app has the capability to interface with the camera and take photos. So this is what I was saying earlier. Okay, we need to set up that we need to set up a, ver a JavaScript object for the HTML node, which has uh, BTN take photo, event listener to wait for a click, function that runs when we do the click. So let's find our spot where we've got all of our variables, our objects.
over here at about line 200. Here's where we've got all our variables. OK, well, we had button scan barcode previously, linked over to button save barcode. Next line, create a variable for lbtn take photo, save photo, I mean, btn save photo equal to the name of the ID, pound btn save photo. So we've got a we've got an object in JavaScript. Let's go to our section where we've got all our all our event listeners, and we'll set up uh, L button say photo dot on click, etc. That's near the end of our code. Right over here. So dollar. This is a, at about line six ten. Uh, L B T N. Save photo. on in the event of a click comma run function save photo listeners in one handy place where I can easily go reference them again or change them. I've got all my uh, variable definitions up on another spot, all in a nice place. And I'm just putting in sequence, basically, the definitions of each of these functions. So we'll back up a little bit to where we've got the function definition area, and we will define function save photo. Inside of that is where we will set up the ability to take the photo. See, we've got uh, end scan barcode. So here's where we set up function. Function save photo. Curly braces. And function save photo. And remember, I said here about this is at least a little bit of a check for ourselves. Uh, is this function running as expected when it's expected? So we're always free to do our console output to help ourselves. Um, we'll say s function save photo is running. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Um, if we do a little um, quick test in the simulator, it should not give you any errors. It's always good to pause at a moment to check if your code is all right. If that's working, then we'll add the functionality to take the photo. Well, we're going to go back to the documentation of Cordova to remind ourselves on how that code works, and then we'll, we'll add our variation of it. I'll take a quick look at my error list. Uh, nothing bad there. I'll run it in the simulator or device. Be better to do it on the device because um, obviously when we test this for real, I do want to take a photo. We need a real device. You don't have a web camera on your computer. 
if you've got the simulator set up right, it would uh, interface with a web camera to take a photo. But at the very least, I want to see that I get the output from pressing the button. And if not, I want to then troubleshoot it. So I haven't uh, done anything with the simulator yet, so I've got to create a quick account. a brand new button take a photo now here in the um, in the uh, simulator you might see the actual field and that's fine because I, I want to see where the data is and then we'll we'll deal with it but uh, take a photo in the output here at least obviously it's not ready to take the photo yet but I am seeing photo, take a photo is running save a photo is running so at least if I see that I'm on the right track cordovadatapache.org we'll take a quick look at the documentation here we've played with uh, taking photos before a while ago there were a lot of oohs and ahs on that day when we got our device to take a photo now we're gonna hear them again because we're gonna do it or uh, use it to take a photo of our item so the Cordova documentation at the top here from the left side we'll go over to camera So inside of the camera section, if we then jump to camera, uh, I guess either or, capital or not. So jump to the camera subsection of the camera section on the left side. We're going to use this, camera.getPicture. So we've got the camera object and the getPicture method. And it has the success callback, error callback, and options. This is what we've seen with seen a little bit before. And uh, we will have options here because what we can do is we can take the photo and then all that raw data can be plugged into our database. I don't want that. I want the path to the photo. So we'll see the documentation tells us in detail later on over here destination type a file URI so it's going to be it's going to be a, an address um, a path We'll set other other things too. We'll set a width and a height of the photo. If we don't set that, it'll be like the maximum size uh, saved to the person's device. Um, maybe we'll make it a little smaller so that it doesn't take up all the person's uh, space. We'll also change the quality so that it uh, again we don't use up all the user's uh, space on their device. So the way this works ultimately then is simply um, get picture with a couple of uh, success or failure callbacks. Again, different syntax than pouch, where inside of pouch we had dot put, dot get, whatever, and then we had function, failure, comma, success. Here it's success, callback function, comma, success, uh, failure, callback function, plus options. So in Visual Studio, inside of our function save photo, we're going to start the navigator dot camera dot get picture parentheses
we'll use our sort of syntax that we've been using fn camera success comma fn camera failure comma curly braces for options So these look like plain old variables or just um, something simpler, but these are callback functions. They're not in the syntax of parentheses. If they were, they would be immediately invoked. That's what, we don't want that. And we're not really passing any parameters into these. They automatically sort of come through. So this, this is the syntax. These are callback functions. These options we'll set in a moment. But below that, we can define uh, fn camera success and fn camera failure. Now the documentation tells us that when we set this up, as I said, there's, uh, there's an object that automatically is passed in. So technically, to be correct here, we've got success, and here we've got failure. The documentation calls it different things. Again, the, these are arbitrary, but we've been using success and failure over and over. Uh, sometimes the documentation calls it data for success and error for error. Again, those names don't matter. They're arbitrary. We're defining that the function camera success, uh, we pass in the parameter success. In function camera, camera failure, we pass in the failure object. Console log. success and what was that success camera failure what was that failure Okay, so we'll get back to these two in just a moment. This is our basic syntax. We've got function save photo. Whenever we click the button, we'll start our whole function to save a photo, to take a photo. What actually opens up the camera app on the person's device is navigator.camera get picture. We have a success or a failure in that order, and then we're going to do something with success or failure. Well, these curly braces here are for us to uh, pass in some options to the whole system of taking a photo. As I said, I want to take it, the photo at a certain size, at a certain quality, 
uh, and save it to the album and all of that. So this will be here, key and value pairs in JSON format. We can put it all in one long line, or we can break it apart between the curly braces. And it might look a little odd. Something like that. In any event, we're going to then have a uh, first a, a key here of quality, colon 25. It might be a little too low. We can play with various values, whatever you like. The example in the documentation was 50. So 50% 50 quality, 25% quality, 99% quality. This is how, what's the quality of the image data you're saving to the person's memory. Memory card. Comma, next value. We will say, OK, this photo that we're taking, we have to explicitly also say, save to photo album. Capital T, capital P, capital A. True. If we don't say that, the photo that we took is just kind of floating around in memory. The path to the photo, the photo data, is just floating around in memory for us to do something with. Here we're saying save the photo itself to the, the, the memory card or internal storage. Comma, next line, target width. Say 1024 pixels and then target height. Uh, 768. All that we're doing here is attempt to take a photo and deal with. success or failure and pass in options. You get width twice. Oops, width. Height. Thank you. So we're passing in the options of the quality of the photo, that yes, we're saving it to the device, and a width and a height. Well, for the failure, we, we're giving ourselves, uh, the, the developer, we're giving ourselves some console output here for us to figure out the errors. If we wanted to tell the user something happened, uh, we can have an alert here that pops up to tell the user, sorry, camera didn't work or something. But obviously, we should be testing it ourselves to make sure it works. But that's what the failure function could do, to tell the user something went wrong. What we want ultimately for success is, OK, we took a photo. We've got the success object. That has uh, the data that points to the, the photo in the memory. Well, we'll, we'll use that as our value that we're going to insert into in photo. In photo is currently empty. When we take the photo, we want to set the value of that empty disabled input field, which is the success data we get from taking a photo successfully. If success, uh, write the path to the photo into the photo input field. So that then later when we do save comic, 
it will read what's in that field and store it in our data into pouch. Now we have a reference to that photo stored in our pouch data so that when we retrieve the photo when we retrieve the info we will then display that data on screen. We won't, we won't see it on screen just yet, but go ahead and save it and run it. Uh, test it a little bit. Um, test it on a real device with a real camera for it to really work. I don't think you'll get very good results in the simulator. I still have a couple of uh, devices if anyone needs one. Go ahead and save it and run it on a real device. Check your errors. Let's see, my error list seems fine switch to a device and run it there. You can open up the Chrome Dev Tools and connect to the device if you want. So again, because I've added a new plugin with new internal code and new overhead, it takes a moment for all of this to compile once again. Eventually, it'll load up on my app, and then I can test it with a real device with a real camera. Depending on the device, you may get an alert that says, would you like to give this, this app access to the camera? So I notice some devices say that, and some don't. We'll see if it does it on mine. Obviously, you have to allow that. All right, so my app is loading up here. I'll stay in the Visual Studio debugger for a moment. All right, so I am signed in. I'm gonna. I'm signed in as b at b dot com. Save comic. Got a brand new button, take photo. I press take photo. My screen has changed to take a photo. I'll take a photo. There's a photo. I'm going to accept it, check mark. Every device is also going to be a little bit different. Uh, some are going to have a, an actual you know, camera icon. You tap the camera. On mine, I had to tap the screen to take the photo. So that's something you can't quite control. It's up to the device's camera feature. I'm going to accept it, click check mark. My output that's happening right there says, OK, the function of save photo is running. I got the camera success, line by 93. And here is the path to that, to that particular photo. It shows that it's, uh, it's in storage. And this is nothing to be concerned that it says emulated, even though I'm running on a real device. This is just an internal name that Android user uses. It says emulated, but it's not emulated. That's just what they call it. So there is a file in the storage of the device somewhere deep down there in the data connected to this particular app. It made a folder, com.smithy.cvdb, inside the cache. There's this file, blah, 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 .jpeg. So this is the path to the photo stored on the device. That's, what's, that's what we're going to save with the with the data. So it, when I then click Save, Comic Saved, I don't have a way to retrieve that yet. We'll do that in a moment. But I have saved here now, success. I've saved this. Um, I've saved this comic with that and all the other fields we've created so far to the database. If I 
stop the connection in Visual Studio. And if I exit my app and go to the device's gallery, you know, photo viewer, camera roll, whatever it's called in the device, if you go find the, the camera roll in the device, you should see that that photo that I took in this app is in the picture. So from a distance, I've got all the photos I've taken with this device. There's the photo I just took. So if I go look at the actual photo viewer of this device, I will see that there is an entry of that photo that I just took in the device, in the memory card, in the device. If I go check this out in the Chrome Dev Tools, so I just saved ZZ number 33. That's the one where I saved the photo, but I have no way to retrieve that photo info yet. We're getting to that. But if I look in the in this output, it looks pretty much the same as Visual Studio. View uh, comics info is running, and up here, uh, there it is, uh, save photo. So that looks pretty much the same as what Visual Studio showed. Function save photo is running. There's the path to the photo. Ultimately here, success, the, the photo was saved. I just click right here, uh, view the comic. So view comic info is running. And then if I go look at my application under index DB, we'll see pouch. I see here the database for the user BB and the database for the user cat. So they've got their own pouch databases with their own comics, plus local storage, which is all my system of logging in and making accounts and such. But anyway, right now I was logged in as BB. I open that up, and if I go, if I view by sequence, this shows I've saved two things to the database so far, two objects. This is the first one, spot number three. This is the second one, ZZ number 33, with a brand new field, photo. And again, the path to the photo in storage. If I'm editing ZZ, if I do edit, and I add publisher Z Comics. Update that. The data in the database also changes. You might have to refresh down here. At the very bottom, you've got clear object and, and refresh. But now I've got the updated, updated comic right there, the third a new revision. So I've got here, if you look on this big old string here, all along we had this rev revision. This is the first version of the data with a unique identifier. The second time I change the data, now it's got two dash whatever. If I make a third change here to the same comic, Note to I'll add a note to that comic. I do notice that the app feels a lot slower when I'm in the Chrome Dev Tools. That's interesting. It does seem to respond a little faster in the Visual Studio debugger, but in the Chrome debugger it seems a little slower. Anyway, I'll just write something. We should see the uh, picture field somewhere in the database. Yes, we, we should. Uh, let me show you where it should be just one moment. If you've added, um, you'll only see it in the debugger so far. We're not seeing it on screen anywhere yet, because we didn't have a picture data to show on screen yet. One moment. You should see a brand new field called photo in the in the debugger right there. Photo with a field to the picture. OK, 
Okay, so I added a brand new note. This is the third change to the same comic. I first added the Z, the publisher, then the notes. So now I've got new data in my database. And my object there shows ZZ number 33 is its third revision. Three dash, etc. Now it is the first time that I saved my um, the first time that I saved my object. It did store the photo field, but the subsequent times that I've updated it, it's deleting my photo field. We'll fix that in a moment. But yes, you should see a photo field, but subsequent edits seem to delete the photo field, which we'll fix in a moment. But we should see some results like this. We'll take a break and then we'll uh, fully set it up so that then we actually see the picture. If I took a photo for, of this comic, I want to see the picture that I took. We'll do that right after the break. So it's 8.12. We'll take a break until 8.22 and we'll go on.